Hey everybody, it's Kneecap here, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the latest AWC, which was, you know, a full week ago now. Uh, and this is going to be something new that I'm doing after each, you know, weekend tournament, cup, you know, uh, circuit, regardless of what it is. Something new that I'm going to do, something that will hopefully evolve as time goes on. I'm not an expert PvP player by any means. I'm a decent or good PvP player, but I'm very fascinated in the competitive, and I'm very fascinated in following what the metas are and everything like that. And I'm hoping to use these videos to kind of explore that and talk about that, something that I enjoy very much uh, watching and consuming. So uh, the latest uh, AWC uh, North America Cup uh, 4, Hamsters and Hares uh, defeated Method NA. Uh, this was uh, kind of kind of cool in a way just because hamsters and hares wasn't a team i really knew much about at all um, so huge congratulations to them but um what i'm going to really explore in this video is kind of a bit of the meta and how i don't necessarily like how it's going but how maybe it's forced to go that way so um <laughs> warning if you are a mage player this could be a trigger warning video because i'm definitely going to complain about mages a lot in this because this was my main takeaway so hamsters and hares they run a uh, a uh, pally uh, elisha mage uh, team and so basically two as they call it two wizards um and uh this of course ended up winning and honestly even the last match wasn't that competitive they were they did lose drop two games out of the best of seven and that was on two smaller maps where having the melee player they actually ran monk instead of warrior so Paladin, Monk, uh, Mage. There's always a Mage. Uh, they actually ran Paladin, Monk, Mage. And uh, on the smaller maps, it was kind of okay. Not that they won every single small map even. But larger maps, the two Wizards just kind of punished them. And that's just kind of how it is always. And that's kind of one of the issues. So the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, the, the Mage issue. So Mage is a huge issue, issue right now. Um, Basically, mages are one of the most tanky things in arena. They're one of the highest damage, highest burst, highest uh, CC uh, capability in arena. And they don't really have a flaw. They are the best thing ever. If you don't have one in your, you know, threes team, you're screwed. And if you have one in your twos team, then you're, you're doing really good. Uh, they're good for RBGs. They're good for everything. You want mages. Uh, they're good in PvE too, but that's not what this video is about. So... Uh, mage is too overpowered. They have the legendary that gives them a super shield. They have ice block. They have alter time. They have they technically since most of them play night fey, uh, you can technically get the seed, which isn't fantastic, but it's just another thing on top of it. They have soul shape. They have blink. They have polymorph. They have ring of frost. They have dragon's breath, so they can get a free ring of frost on you. And it is just an extremely, and then of course they have combustion. <laughs> So it's an extremely powerful thing, and it's in every single team. And I don't think that leads to good viewership overall, but we are going to talk about why I think that it always happens this way. So first things first, I do think mages need nerfed in some way. I think maybe the best way to go about it would be um, lowering their defensiveness a little bit to punish them, because I think in a fantasy game that makes the most sense. Having a cloth wear, be able to just stand there and cast while like a two-handed axe is bearing into them doesn't make sense in, in terms of the actual gameplay. So I think maybe lowering their defenses a little bit would be the way to go with this. I think one um, option is, and you couldn't do this necessarily in this expansion on a macro level, but make them, uh, alter time is arcane only, cauterize, I didn't even mention cauterize, cauterize is fire only, and ice block is frost only. So they have to choose one of the three based on their spec. Now, Maybe for PvP, like if you wanted to put it in for this expansion, maybe what you could do is you could have it as an honor talent and you could choose which of the three that you wanted regardless of your spec um, and your honor talents. And so that would be one that you're picking no matter what. So it's less variation. But, you know, if you're a fire mage and you really want the altar time, then you don't have the cauterize. Instead, you have the altar time. Um, and maybe that's something you could do just to lower their defensiveness a little bit. And that, that wouldn't be, you know, people would be like, oh, I want my ice block, I want my ice block, I, I get that. Uh, but you could just choose ice block in the scenario that I, I put forward. Uh, I think you have to do something to lower the defensiveness. Maybe other people would say, let them keep all the utility, lower their damage. And others would say, you know, maybe take away 
some of their CC capability or make them choose Frost to have Rigor Frost, you know, something like that. But we have to do something about it, I think, uh, in the grand scheme of things, but I don't necessarily think that they will. And that's what we'll talk about next, uh, my takeaway from the AWC uh, most recently here. So the thing is, at the beginning of an expansion, usually just the first patch, Melee will appear to be really strong, but it's just kind of a mirage, right? They haven't been nerfed to the floor yet, um, and they haven't uh, had something that's considered overpowered against the uh, range players taken away yet. This will always happen, and it, hap it happens every single expansion. Eventually, the melee will get nerfed enough to where a range will overtake them, because range just, you know, in, in a game where you're trying to stay alive, if you're far away from your opponent it's generally good especially if you can still do damage at that distance so that's what we saw here with an elisham basically replacing the warrior role we saw a lot of paladin mage warrior and that being overtaken in this case by the elisham uh, mage paladin and i think we're only going to see more of that i think we're going to see more shadow priests i think we're going to see more warlocks as as the expansion goes on and i think we're going to see less and less melee i think warriors are still really strong it doesn't on a, on a small map especially it doesn't hurt to have a warrior on a small map um that where they can get a bunch of uptime but we saw mirages of things early in the x pack with rat paladins which is my main um and death knights even a little bit monk monks are still decent um at, in pvp honestly even despite some of the things that have happened to them recently to kind of go along with warriors but you know i put them in the same category as paladins where they they're pretty strong but they're not really elite if you're a really good monk now monks have a lot of other utility like movement and stuff um, but if you're a really elite player of course you could still play a monk because it has extra utility just like you can kind of play like a feral druid if you're really really good now of course that only really works with jungle nowadays but it maybe that's just a theory because I think it could work otherwise. They still have a lot of utility with Cyclone and stuff. They can do things at range, essentially. So, anyways, uh, the the point being is that eventually you're gonna get, you're going especially in threes, especially in esports, you're gonna eventually get to these two wizard healer teams, and I think that's just the way Blizzard wants it to be. Um, during a cast early on, uh, we saw, or it might even been this past one in the in the some teams that lost. I think we might have seen some melee, they call it Zug Zug, just fighting each other. It might have been um, Rat Pally Warrior on each team, and they're just kind of attacking each other. And they're like, oh, they're not setting up CCs. It might not be the most exciting thing, but it still takes a lot of skill to do this, and they're talking to you about it. And you see people in comments, too, say a lot of times, well, I like watching the setups uh, that they do to, to get the kills and stuff. And I think that's the issue. I think that's kind of the way Blizzard wants it to be, where you have these huge setups going into kills instead of people executing a rotation really well, like what a melee would have to do. So for Rep Paladin, for example, they were considered overpowered because one ability, Divine Toll, had a, you know, depending on your, for a lot of PvP players, it's not the 60% or higher. It's more like 50% because um, they don't necessarily farm them all for the, <laughs> the conduit. But um, so let's just say 50% chance to get a, a more than normal hit on our divine toll but it's it it doesn't have to always hit for the max number right so you can hit four times essentially with judgment but it doesn't always hit four it doesn't always hit four or one it can hit two it can hit three and then it can hit four times it, it will hit it can hit uh i think does it always hit once i don't even know but it hit, can hit one two three or four times let's say and so it's, a, it's not a very high chance that it hits you for all four but when it does it really hurts and if they all crit somehow but that's just roulette, right? And if you have any kind of damage reduction going into that, and I, I stress any damage reduction, it does not one-shot you. So when you see a Paladin pop his wings, um, just pop a damage reduction because they're probably going to Divine Toll shortly after that. And um, you, you won't get one shot at that point. They weren't OP. People just didn't know what to do or they weren't pressing the proper buttons. That's all it was. And so that was just a mirage. Uh, and I can speak to that because that's what I play. It feels great when I use Divine Toll and they don't pop a damage reduction, of course. And then I can, and if they don't have a damage reduction and I put something else into them, then they might definitely be dead. Um, but, you know, that's not something that happens on any kind of high-end format. And so that's why it doesn't end up working in a high-end format. And I think Blizzard wants it that way. I think they want 
the Wizards setting up kills that look nicer to audiences, even if someone like me isn't that interested in it. Because I technically play melee more. I'm a traditionally melee player, even though I've played range and I've healed and stuff. Um, I, I'm a traditional melee player, and so I like to see melee thrive sometimes, other than rogue. They, they always will kind of let rogue, they, they'll get rogue back into this. They like rogue too, to be in there, again, because it's the setups. They're more interested in the setups to kill than the actual melee versus range, but they've given range all of the, the toolkit to do the setups, essentially. So, like, yeah, if you gave Paladin's Ring of Holy Energy and you could set them up into that with a Paladin blind into a Ring of Holy Energy, uh, then maybe they would let Paladins, uh, DPS Paladins, uh, thrive. But I think it's just one of those things. It's not like a conspiracy or anything like that. Uh, I would liken it to the NBA. I'm a, I'm a big sports fan, which is also why I like esports. I just kind of like the competitive nature of it. In the NBA, they've curtailed the rules to three-point shooting and getting to the rim. And they... So it's not a conspiracy, necessarily. That's just the way they made the rules, because that's what they've decided that how they want to grow the game. Uh, younger kids, who are their demo, uh, they don't care that like a 40-year-old doesn't like them shooting threes every time. Um, a 12-year-old really likes it, and that's what, they, that's what they're going for. And then that 12-year-old will grow up thinking that's normal, and then when they're 40, they'll be okay with it. That's the theory behind it, right? Uh, so that, that's that what they make the rules. So in their head, maybe they're wrong, maybe they're right, they want to do these setups for these kills. That That's how they envision their esports being. They don't care about a melee just executing a rotation perfectly in an 8 to 10 second window, which is also hard. I'm not saying it's as hard as a, a high precision setup with CC, but it's still not easy in a chaotic environment uh, with people CCing you and things like that and knowing what how to... Because you're not only doing your rotation, you're also... Uh, countering whatever they're doing to you while you're doing your rotation and setting up that perfect 8 to 10 second window, you know, or 5 to 10 second window, whatever, to kill your target. And that does take skill too, but maybe because you can't see it as well, you don't see the buttons being pressed, you don't know everything that's going into it. You might not know, like for a rep paladin, that we <laughs> we build our holy power to 5, seraphim, technically you should build it to 5 again, uh, <laughs> final reckoning, uh, execution sentence, divine toll, uh, Templar's verdict. Uh, if it's and if you got prox in between there, then you Templar's verdict again. And then <laughs> if you're using Magister's judgment, for example, as a legendary, and then wake of ashes, judgment again, and then Templar's verdict again. And they, they don't know that. They just think you press divine toll and you win, right? That's what they just think. You press divine toll and you win, and that's what the average person thinks watching. And I understand that. It's not the reality. It's not the reality for most classes. There are warrior is really easy to play right now. I get it. Um, <laughs> I actually leveled the warrior because of that, but it's not. It's not as easy. But all the intervening and stuff that's not as easy as what people might think it is. That, that takes a lot of skill to do too, and it's very disappointing for me. So we'll see how it goes for, go, moving forward. It's something I'll revisit in the videos if it keeps up. But my projection would be that we're just going to see more and more double wizard comps with healer going forward. And melee will just be kind of less left in the dust, while we also see rogues kind of propelling themselves back into uh, the discussion as well. Whether that's rogue mage or rogue shadow priest, uh, that's my prediction going forward. So, like I said, this is the first one of these. Uh, hope to evolve these as I go forward. Uh, after each tournament, I'll also be doing MDI ones uh, separately. But yeah, uh, that's it for this video. As always, I ask you to please subscribe to the channel because it helps me out so much. Other than that, everybody, have a good one.